We are just a few weeks away from the 2024 Money in the Bank. So I decided to rank all of the women's Money in the Bank matches here today. So let's get right to it. The scale that we're using for today's tier ranking goes as follows. Starting with the bottom, we got no baby girl. Then we've got um girl. And then we have good job, ladies. Girl boss level and the highest one being the girl power level. As you can tell, I put some thought into naming these tiers. Let's get started with the first ever Women's Money in the Bank that took place in 2017. For this video, I rewatched every single Women's Money in the Bank back to back. It was actually relatively easy because they're pretty short. So if you guys want to do the same and do your own ranking, you are more than welcome to, or you can just rely on your memory. <laughs> Anyways, but for 2017, it was funny because all I could remember from this match was being irritated that James Ellsworth was the one that ended up getting the briefcase for Carmella. For some reason, in my mind, I had remembered him actually carrying up Carmella. But then when I rewatched it, I'm like, oh, wait, he never even carried her up. He literally climbed the ladder himself and grabbed the money in the bank briefcase. And I completely forgot that minor detail that he went up himself, not with Carmella, but himself. So he grabs the money in the bank briefcase. And I'm just thinking like, God, I remember this being shitty back then like a shitty finish back then, but it's even shittier now to think that we're always talking about how happy and how proud we are of the women and the women's division, the women's evolution, revolution, whatever. We're always talking about how great it is, right? But when you think back to how the first ever women's money in the bank match was won by a dude, it's even more upsetting now, to be honest. And what's worse, it wasn't even like a good finish. It wasn't, it wasn't funny. It wasn't effective. And everybody was so confused afterwards, like even in the match, like it really robbed Carmela's moment of her being the one to grab the briefcase because everybody was like, oh, does this count? Should we count this? What do we do? And so going back and watching this match, I remembered also why this was the only thing that I remember because there really wasn't that much in this match to really uh, talk about. To be honest, it really wasn't that good. And so rewatching this, the ending fell flat. It almost felt like this match was incomplete. Like there was still more that could have been done. So now let's go ahead and talk about who the MVP of this match actually was. I'm going to give it to Charlotte Flair. To me, she was the MVP of this match because she had the most hard hitting moments. Uh, she had that really cool spot off the top rope. And she was possibly the most memorable person in this match uh, besides that unfortunate finish. So with all that being said, I'm going to have to rank the first ever Women's Money in the Bank from 2017 in the lowest tier with no baby girl. Mm -mm. Sorry. And for those of you who need a reminder, Carmella was the one that won this match. And she held the contract for a still record of 287 days until she cashed it in and defeated Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Moving on to 2018. So... This one here, I got to tell you, again, watching these back to back, oh my God, it was such a huge improvement from 2017 to 2018. I felt that they did so much more. They were more creative with all of the spots that they did in this matchup, and they actually used the ladders more. They were able to use the ladders as weapons, which is something that you definitely want to see in this type of matchup. Now, as for some of the best moments, there were quite a few in this one. Bear with me. Natty slamming Sasha onto the ladders. Charlotte powerbombing Ember Moon onto the ladder. Naomi springboarding from the freaking ropes to the ladder and almost getting the briefcase. That was cool. And as for the MVP of this match, I got to give it once again to Charlotte Flair because Charlotte just looked alert Looks like she really just knew what was going on. And the best way to explain it was she, to me, was the glue in this match. This girl was everywhere, touching a little bit of everything. She had all her hands in the cookie jar in this match. And so for that reason, my MVP in this match is Charlotte Flair. So now for the ranking. Because of the huge leap that we saw from the first one to the second one, I got to rank this one a lot higher. So I'm ranking this one in the good job ladies category because, again, I can't rank it any lower given how much more effort 
was put into this matchup. And as for Alexa Bliss, she held the contract for a mere two hours and 52 minutes before cashing in and defeating Nia Jax later on in the evening for the Raw Women's Championship. Moving on to the 2019 Women's Money in the Bank. Honestly, what I kept thinking about during this match was how underrated Naomi is in these Money in the Bank matches that she's been in. She really stood out to me last year's in 2018. And then she stood out again in the 2019 Money in the Bank match. She was just so much freaking fun. Everything she did was probably the most unique thing of the matchup. And she did everything so clean and effortlessly. And I feel like she has not gotten her flowers for her performances that she's had. So let's talk about best moments. You had Nikki Cross doing the spot where she puts the ladder in her head and knocks everybody down. That was cool. Naomi walking over the ladders and then doing a splits underneath the ladder. That was very cool too. Both Natty and Mandy squishing Bailey in between the ladder. That was fun. Ember Moon's eclipse. That was phenomenal. The MVP of this match was Naomi. She again had the coolest spots. So Naomi girl, you get the MVP for 2019. With all that being said, I'm going to rank the 2019 Women's Money in the Bank match under the Good Job Ladies category. And of course, Bailey got the victory and she held the contract for even less. She only held it for one hour and 25 minutes before she cashed it in and defeated, you guessed who, Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Next up, we got the Women's Money in the Bank 2020. All right, so I remember when I first watched this live, I enjoyed it, right? Because it was a whole new concept. It was very different from any of the other Money in the Bank matches that you'd seen. It was the first time that, one, it wasn't happening in the ring. It was happening at the WWE headquarters. And two, both the men's and the women's was happening simultaneously. And they started at the bottom level and they had to get all the way to the rooftop. So this one was a little bit more difficult to rank, right? Because you're also seeing the men's as well. So I basically tried really hard to take the men's portion out of this and just focus on the women's portion of it all. And so it did make it a little bit more difficult. But here's the thing, though. Rewatching this match, I remember having a good time with it the first time because it was so different and we hadn't seen anything like it. And so we were, every little thing that they did was a surprise because we didn't know what to expect. However, re-watching this, it was very, very, un- like, it just wasn't, like, it didn't keep your attention. It really did not. Like, I was watching this and I was going, man, in terms of, like, the physicality, there was hardly none of that because it was all just, like, running and chasing and trying to get to the briefcase, right? Now, there were some fun moments, of course, like the ones that stood out to me the most were um, the food fight, although there were some nasty bits with, like, Otis shoving food in his mouth, whatever. And then there was um, Dana at one point. They were walking through one they were all running through one of the rooms and there was a guy that was cleaning and so the floor was wet and Dana goes and she like baseball slides and I actually thought she did pretty good on that like re-watching that I'm like that was kind of hard to execute but she nailed it um so those were some of the things that really stood out to me but the reason why I liked this the first time was because we were seeing a tour of the WWE headquarters like there was so much that We'd never seen, uh, we've seen little pieces here and there, but to get like a, it felt like a tour, like that was kind of fun, right? And so truthfully, looking back at that year's Money in the Bank, that was the only reason why it was fun, getting to see all of these like rooms and things that we'd never seen before. And again, not knowing who was going to pop up, but rewatching it, it did not hit as hard and there was really nothing memorable uh specifically for the women like in terms of like the cool uh spots other than what i just mentioned earlier so for that reason i don't even got an mvp for this match this match has no mvp for me uh and sorry no mvp and i'm wrecking this one in the lowest tier in the no baby girl category Mm -mm. and as a reminder you guys all know how this went down 2020 oscar wins however She never cashed in since she was awarded the Raw Women's Championship upon the pregnancy announcement of Becky Lynch. All right, moving on to the women's 2021 Money in the Bank. So this one, my biggest takeaways from this was that it was kind of silly to have Alexa Bliss do the hypnotizing bit. I really did not like that because it made you think, okay, well, if she can hypnotize Zelina to do this, 
then why can't she hit hypnotize all the other women and just win the match? There was just some things that were a little too silly with that. But the other thing that I really did not like was the finish to this match because the finish was all of the women at the top, right? They had three ladders set up and they were all trying to get the briefcase. And it was dumb because they were all up there and they were all trying to grab it, trying to grab it. And then Nikki A.S.H. comes out of nowhere, just climbs on every top of everybody. And apparently they all had blinders on and no one saw. And she just goes in and she just grabs it. So I did not like the finish to this match at all. And when I think about best moments in this one, there's really only a few. And that is Naomi powerbombing Liv and Zelina onto the ladder. And the other one is Naomi doing the leg drop on Nikki A.S.H. on the ladder. So you can imagine that my MVP for this match was also Naomi once again. Because again, for the same reason that she was last time, she just had the best, the most creative, the smoothest uh, spots in the actual matchup. So I am ranking this one in the um girl category. And of course, as I mentioned, Nikki A.S.H. won. She held the contract for a single day before cashing in and defeating Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Championship on Monday Night Raw following the evening. So if you're counting... That's already one, two, three women that went on <laughs> to cash in and successfully defeat Charlotte Flair. 2017, Carmella. 2019, Bailey. And then 2021, Nikki A.A. Stage. Let's continue on to 2022 Women's Money in the Bank. Biggest takeaways from this match was one, I was there. So I remember this match very vividly, more so than a lot of the other ones. And unfortunately, the thing that I remembered most was the botches and most of them were from Shotzi. And I feel really bad because she, it took her a long time to bounce back from that. Uh, she got a lot of flack from people on the internet and it sort of lives on forever. And when you think about like Shotzi and her run in WWE, unfortunately you do think a lot of those botches, which is unfortunate. But when you're in a match like this and the bar has been raised so high up for the women, you're going to see it's going to be noticeable and people are going to talk about it, right? So that was like the, the biggest thing that I remembered was seeing that. And then going back and rewatching it, I still had the same feeling of like, oh, damn, like seeing those moments actually happen, those botches, it does give you the ugh moment. But the other thing that I noticed was that the camera cuts got increasingly worse for this particular Money in the Bank. Again, I watched them all back to back and 2022's camera cuts were just like everywhere. And so it was sort of, um, I had never seen this match on a TV, like on the computer on TV. Cause again, I was there live. So I didn't watch it again since the last time when I saw it. And so rewatch it, I was just like, Oh no, I'm reminded of all of these camera cuts. Right. And so that was another thing that I took away from this. Um, but you know what, though, to their credit, again, 2022, they got more bold, they tried bigger things. And that's one of the things that I've noticed each and every single year for the women's money in the bank matches is they always try to enhance the match with bigger moments like they get they get more riskier. And you kind of want you want to see that, of course. So those were my biggest takeaways. Now, as for best moments, there were only a few again, because there was a lot of moments that were botched. But there were some good moments in this. And that was in the beginning, Asuka hitting all her strikes to Becky. You guys know I'm a sucker for that. Fun. Uh, Liv Morgan doing the power bomb off the ladder to Lacey. Fun. But that being said, MVP of this match was Liv Morgan. You knew, she knew that this was her time. This was her moment. And you could tell she had that extra confidence in her. And she just, I love the way that she moved. It was her moment and she took it. So with all that being said, I am going to rank the 2022 Women's Money in the Bank in the um girl category. And as a reminder, Liv Morgan ended up holding the contract for two hours before cashing in and defeating Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship that same night. And now we're moving on to 2023. Let's start with biggest takeaways. The biggest takeaway for me was when I thought back to this match, the only thing I really remembered was uh, Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. And then going back and rewatching it, I remembered why that was all I really remembered because their feud 
really, really just got even steamier during this Money in the Bank match. I thought they killed it because no matter what they did, no matter all of the distractions, they always came back to each other to beat the living crap out of each other, right? And so that was something that I felt their feud, again, enhanced this matchup. The other takeaway that I got from this is that the women felt more prepared in this match. They felt more steady when they were handling the ladders, when they were doing these moves. Uh, and it, I felt more confident because they felt confident in this type of matchup in the stipulation. And when it comes to best moments, there were some really good ones. EO, of course, doing her moonsault off the ladder. Zelina Vega with possibly one of the biggest moments in this match, hitting the code red on Zoe Stark on the ladder. Very cool. And I also thought, so here's the thing. I had mentioned in all the other ones, I did not like the finishes. I hated the finishes for all of the other women's Money in the Bank matches, right? Except this one. I thought 2023 had the best finish for the women's. It was essentially EO handcuffing both um, Bailey and Becky Lynch. So they're trapped in the ladder. They're handcuffed. And then EO goes to the top and she gets her briefcase. I thought that was cool too. Uh, it was different. It was unique. So I really liked that finish. So kudos to them. Now, as for MVP of this match, I am giving it to Becky Lynch because similar to how I felt about Charlotte in the uh, earlier Money in the Bank matches, I felt that Becky Lynch carried herself in this match in such a confident way. She just had this demeanor about her where she just knew what the hell was going on. She knew where all the puzzle pieces fit. And again, like I said earlier with Charlotte, she was the glue. Becky was the glue in this match. And so Becky Lynch was my MVP for 2023. So with that being said, I am ranking 2023 and the girl boss level. And of course, that year, EO Sky won, and she was finally a woman who held the briefcase for more than a day in a very long time uh, since the 2017 one. Uh, EO held it for 35 days, and she eventually cashed in on Bianca Belair at SummerSlam to win the WWE Women's Championship. So there you have it, my tier ranking video for the Women's Money in the Bank matches from 2017 through 2023. Now, if you enjoyed this tier ranking video and you're like, I want more tier ranking videos, please suggest some of them in the comment section below, or you can check out some of the existing ones already. Might I suggest the one where I rank every single Shawn Michaels WrestleMania match? Well, you can go ahead and check that out right here. Uh, so go ahead and give that one some love. Also, subscribe to the channel. See you guys on the next one.